So we're in the back bay at our back bay project. Tim is joining me again this week. Uh, last week we talked about your mock-up over there of the Prosico Cat 5. Yep. And then this week you guys were installing it. But I noticed Pat was actually using this earlier. What's in that? Just water. Why so? Um, it just gets the brick moist. Like we talked about the bond. I'm not gonna say it again, but the bond. <laughs> the tenacious, um, someone yeah. actually called us out and said that we were, I think Matt Rising was the last one to, to say something about a tenacious bond. And we, we just took his place. Yeah, we were just reading the instructions. That's what it says. Yeah. So the moisture, you're, you're putting it on the brick. I wanna address a couple of the questions that came up. Um, I think there was maybe, maybe I did a bad job. I probably did a bad job explaining it, but this is not in, intended to go on brick that is damaged. If you know the brick is in poor condition, you still need to repoint the brick and make sure it's in good condition. We, this isn't a repair. This is strictly to apply to the back to help prevent air from entering our space or in fact, our exit. air, yeah. Like the air in here affecting the brick at the same time. Right, but yep. it's also, you know, the, there was questions about, well, couldn't you spray foam it? Or couldn't you use a different product? And, and there are other products out there. Spray foam doesn't actually work here because now you're trapping that moisture in there because it's technically a vapor It barrier. would be one that you would almost say is bad for the brick. Right, because now that brick has that moisture and it just kind of will deteriorate over time. So this is a specific question we asked Tom over at Prosico, we did. hey, we want to make sure that this breathes. Yep, and fortunately we did have good brick. So right. it wasn't, so, it was a good option for us. So you spray the wall with water, Yeah. get that tenacious bond, Yeah. and then you roll this on, and to kind of repeat ourselves, after that we have all these cracks and crevices, and then of course the gaps between the window, we're, we're gonna be using the sealant product, right? Yep, the fast flash. This is only one coat too, it'll get another coat of roll on tomorrow. Um, that'll even cover it up even more and reach into these cracks as far as we can. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a, a fast once over, see where we're missing, and then tomorrow is a little bit more of a detailed roll. So, uh, tip, if it's shiny, it's wet. And I know that because <laughs> my hand in the back one back there. So there's a spot we definitely got to touch up. All right, cool. I think that's enough on the Prosico stuff, but this week we're starting our framing, structural framing. Yeah. So I noticed you got LFLs and LVLs. Yeah. So LFL laminated from framing lumber. Why are you using that rather than a typical KD? Personal preference, I guess, but uh, they're definitely a lot straighter. They're stable. Um, and you're getting for 200 studs, there's not going to be many in here that we can't use. And compared to an LVL? So LVLs would have been a preference, but in this one, the supplier didn't have enough of the two by four material. Mm -hmm. So next best option. Um, was the LFLs. And, and the LFLs actually at a price point lower than something like an LVL. They are, yeah. So if you're looking for straight lumber, the LFL is actually a great They're option. They're a good option. Great for stringers too, all those things. They're good, good material. Speaking of which, I know over here, earlier I saw the guys putting LVL under these stringers. Can you explain what this staircase is here? So this staircase is the common staircase for the rest of the building. There's three units above us. And during the process of demo, we, we certainly noticed there was a lot of squeaking and, and a lot of movement every time someone went up and down. So I think you had brought up the option of, of just putting up you know, a two by four LVL to strengthen them like mm -hmm. you would on the side of a staircase normally. We ended up just buying two by eights and actually cutting them in and peeling them in place. So, so you're essentially reframing the staircase from below. Yeah. And that's a, I, want, I want to really call attention to that because a lot of you guys you know, when we're talking about these renovations, we're not always in a single family home. This is a multi-family building. This is yeah. a brownstone. So we have homes on either side of us as well as above us. So it's important to note that. So something like this, we can't just rebuild this staircase. No. But like you said, when you guys did demo, I remember being here, there was some bounce to it. There was a lot of noise to it. There was. And you know, now we have the opportunity where we can kind of come up from underneath it and attach these LVLs and screw everything together you know, add adhesive and now this thing is nice and sturdy. Yeah. Same thing with above, right? Yeah, what you're actually looking at is the bottom of the landing that's at the top of the stairs before you turn the corner and kind of wrap your way up the rest of the staircase. And then same scenario, everything was kind of creaky and cracky. So we added two by eights where we could, span things where we could. And this joint here is actually something that the engineers kind of specced was kind of the lap. So this staircase doesn't have like a typical header where the stairs hit, it'll actually cantilever one, out. It's almost one piece here. Yeah, there's a, this is a bearing wall. So this wall is expected to then, these stairs hold themselves up as a cantilever out. 
gotcha. and create kind of that joint at the landing in the stairs. A little bit different, um, but neat way to frame it. Yeah. So this is really where we get you know the team over at Hazel Neal on site walking through a lot of this stuff. When yeah. it comes to renovation, comes to things that we can't really mess with from above we have to be creative with it yeah so this not only did this fix the stair as far as like you know the, the structure of it but it's also setting our ceiling height yep it is setting our ceiling height on this one so that's what we had to figure out was how low we can or how high rather we can frame this landing mm -hmm. and as high as we could keep it that is ceiling height through the kitchen that we're standing in and the hallway behind us so and walking, the top of the staircase walking back to the hallway yep. so here we were just talking about the LFLs, using the LFLs pretty much for our traditional framing, but we have LVL on this wall. Yeah. Why is that? So this one we actually built as a bearing wall. Um, as a bearing wall. As a bearing wall, and we ordered it with all our structural material um, and lucky enough to get the, the supplies we wanted. So this is going to be great for our kitchen cabinetry. It is. As well as our staircase here. Yeah. So our staircase we talked about last week, this will be a U-shaped staircase, kind of freestanding down here yep. uh, with some really cool details. Yep. So. Last week, you guys were also working on downstairs on the subfloor. Let's take a look down there. Walk me through how you guys went about getting this insulation in and then what our next steps are. And, and what about the plumbing and all the mechanicals that are underneath this floor? So they are still there. And I mean, this spray paint line is kind of where we're stopping anything that's gonna be glued for this stage. Um, Cause that plumbing, this is a bathroom here, shower, vanity, toilet over there, and then the staircase, and then the same thing on the other side. These basically four or five sheets, they won't get um, glued or nailed down. So those you'll leave out, so that way basically they can run all the subfloor. So there's no, there's nothing needed in, in any of these areas. No, all the watch plumbing it. is to one so side. Watch. Yeah, thankfully. And we have steam work that has to be done in the area anyways. Yep. So the area that isn't gonna be screwed and glued is all basically in one area. So it's nice to, to not have to- Shuffle things around. Yeah, pieces in each corner. It's just one spot where we're gonna hold off for now. Fair. So as far as getting this floor done, what is our next step down here? So the next step is to continue get this done. And then for us um, is our next step is the structurals down here, which includes some steel work around this staircase. We Why have to we make the staircase bigger and kind of based on current code and the condition of what was up here and the past remodels, mm -hmm. they really, this staircase is not supported the way that it is right now. It doesn't, doesn't meet the standards Mm -hmm. um, to actually hold the weight. So the steel um, is, is going to strengthen, for one, this side, do it in a clear span sure. and be able to not have it have any posts. And then because these areas are so clustered with pipes and everything else, this was originally supposed to be one of the beams was on the directly on the other side of the staircase. But to avoid, you know, costly demos and shutdowns to the building because everybody lives here, mm -hmm. we decided to carry this over I guess it would be another four feet. And because we did that, that actually upsized this side mm. uh, to the load being considerable to that side, it still needs to be steel also. So with what Tim just explained, I wanna also add to that. You know, you might hear the humming in the background, but behind him is the mechanical equipment for the whole building. Yeah. And this wall right here, while it looks like it's been patched, you know, a number of times, which I'm sure it has, is actually a common wall that we don't have the right to move. Yep. So we will come back and, and fire rock it. We're gonna do some patching on it um, and we'll have to access that space for some of our work. But that is a constraint. So moving the floor down, that staircase would have ended up basically against that wall and you would have never been able to access the staircase. Now, yes, there's we could have relocated it, but that simply wasn't the design, which is why our floor is at the elevation it is. But also what, what Tim's talking about is all these pipes. Well, it's like, just move them. Just shut down the building, Tell the send the, the, an email to the neighbors, shut it down. That's not how this works. And especially in, in a lot of these areas in Boston, it is a board and the building has the right to refuse us from doing some work or it might just be cost prohibitive. And that's really what we're facing here is that, you know, yeah, we could move those pipes. We could ask for the approvals to do so, but the cost to do that, while it might seem simple here on camera, we've exhausted these options. Yeah. Hun I would say hundreds of times. Maybe well, that's we want a solution that works for everybody. Right, yeah. and it, it's important that we are good neighbors and we're not just moving things for the sake of moving things and we're being more creative. And just like you know, you said, moving the steel from this location over, you know, yes, it upsides the steel, 
upsizes the steel, but it doesn't require us to add or move piping that yeah. potentially impact the whole building. And here in the cold months in Boston, we certainly don't want to be doing that at this time. No. And from a schedule standpoint, we got to get this steel in. Yeah. So this this is the bigger steel. You have some brackets over there I saw yeah. uh, Ryan from RMS fabricated for us. So you guys are going to install those. What are these? So that kind of goes along with um, not being able to post anything down on the floors because we're in the back bay. Mm. So everything has to kind of rest on the footings that the building is on. Either that or pocketed in, which I guess is the same thing. And you're talking about that steel going into yeah. your brick parting wall. Yeah, we can't add a post and post down to anything because there's nothing there. There's nothing there. So these brackets will attach underneath the I-beams and upstairs against the beam you saw upstairs mm -hmm. also and lag into the brickwork, um, poxied in and bolted in. So we'll drill, set anchors, yeah. set that steel up in the wall, and we're gonna install those so when Ryan gets on site, he can set beams. Yep. Cool. Guys, appreciate you sticking around. Stay tuned for our next episode. We're gonna get into a lot of fun stuff here. I got a lot of finishes I was gonna talk about this episode. We'll, we'll, we'll share that for uh, next week. See you then.